Hello and welcome to another episode of Anything Arduino. In the last episode we did a heater controller with a DS18B20 um, and we were also going to make a pump controller with the same concept. Uh, however, uh, because this one is the controller, uh, it has this extra, uh, extra cable connected to it uh, for the 5 volts and also it takes up another uh, another socket in my in my outlet so and to to get away from that I thought that because I got a bigger box for my other project I'm going to incorporate a power supply inside this uh, 5 volts so do you just get 220 or one t and 110 into the project and and uh, we get 5 volts from inside. We're going to do this in a very cheap and simple way. On eBay you can buy these types of uh, power supplies. They're usually called Apple power supplies. They are of course not made by Apple. They just look like they are. Uh, they have the same design and inside it's not the same. It's usually quite bad quality. Um, but they do give you 5 volts. Uh, you have to make sure that it works in your project before you make everything. You have one of these lying around, plug it in and uh, usually they come with a cable, strip the cable and connect it to 5 volts and ground to make sure it works because some projects these doesn't work because they have something called switched power instead of linear power. So, or voltage, switched voltage instead of linear voltage. So instead of a really correct, nice flat line, 5 volts, if you look in a oscilloscope, it would actually be a bit jagged. It's because, look it up on the internet, we're not going to go in it, into it here. Uh, you can, there are these models and these, and then there are tons of other models. But if you choose between these two, they are, these are with the EU plug, you can also have with the US plug, doesn't matter. They're usually always rated uh, from 100 volts to 240 uh, input voltage. I'd prefer this one in front of this one because this one is one PCB with high voltage and 5 volts on the same PCB while this is actually two PCBs, one for the 220 and one for the 5 volts with cables in between. We'll go through this in a minute. So let's uh, strip this one down and uh, let's see how we can incorporate it into our project. So let's begin by making sure it works. So here's one of those cables that you get along with your power adapter. Let's do that and let's strip the cable. So. Also very important to do when you buy things from eBay, make sure that they work at all. Uh, so let's see if we can find out which switch here. Five point five volts, so let's just assume it is black and, and red. It could be that they have power on all four, I don't know, but these two at least is five volts out. So it works. Great. We don't need that anymore. So what we should do now is we take this apart and we need a some kind of flat half sharp object like a screwdriver would work well and so this plate here is supposed to come off So 
So this one was quite difficult. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not that easy. I want to stress that these are cheap China made. Uh, this got a UL marking and sometimes they got a CE marking. That does not have to be the case even though it says here. I wouldn't trust that. So this is what it looks like inside. You can see there is one PCB up here and one PCB down here. And so the one down here is where the 220 in this case goes in. And then up here, if you follow it along, you see that the USB cable is on that side. So let's take this out. And here's the cable. So if we do like this, you can see that it is well spaced. If you put it like this, you will have lots of space in between the high voltage dangerous part and the five voltage not that dangerous part. Um, one thing with these China copies is that they are from time to time very badly soldered. So. Let's make sure that all the solder joints are okay. And let's cut these. And then we have our circuit board here with our with our relay and our AT Tiny. And then connected here is the DS18B20. So five volts and ground here. And we are going to connect the power here. So we're gonna do, we're gonna use some of these headers to make sure that we get power to all the places that we need. All right, so I have prepared two cables here, power in and power out from the relay. And once again, I'm using grounded cable. The extra safety in that is really good to have. And I really suggest that you, anyone doing a project and have the ability to have ground inside use it so we're gonna connect this now so I almost put that one wrong because that one is outgoing so that should be once again in the normally closed I'm going to put that in so if the circuit brakes my water pump will start doing as it does today and just stand there pumping cold water around the house if I have no hot water okay so a bit of messy soldering later I have switched this cable that was there with these four cables so uh, we now can turn it like this that fits our design better uh, we're also going to solder I, I marked here so minus is the f of the four pins minus is the lowest pin here and plus is the highest pin of the four pins inside so minus is there and plus is there so we're gonna solder some cables onto it and then we actually can fit everything inside here nice and snug but it does fit though if you have a flimsy cable like this it's not always that the screw can hold it, so you put a big gob of 
solder and you have something to really hold on to with the screw. There. Now these circuits, the switched power supplies is really sensitive so if we've done some something wrong in our soldering here this has all gone to waste now. So we're hoping that it's not the case but just in case we're going to before we hook it into the, the Arduino we're going to make sure it's working and once again high voltage is dangerous we have live wires here I'm only going to touch these two these will be hopefully be 5 volts uh, if we've done something wrong it's probably zero and if we've done something really wrong it is it could be 220 in here that's not gonna be the case but so once again once this one goes into an outlet this can be dangerous so please m be mindful of what you do Let's hope there comes no smoke when we plug this in. So let's see. Come on. There, yeah, should be correct. Yeah. No smoke. That's a good first sign. Let's measure this. So, yeah, we're still at five, five and a half. Great. So, we didn't destroy it by our soldering. So, Let's get out the hot glue gun and put this together as it should be. Alright, so let's go through this quite strange design. Um, when I did this, I just hooked it up and I thought it was a good idea to just put this PCB onto this PCB and solder it to the three pins on the relay board. That was, in hindsight, not a good idea, so um, that is the reason I had to pick a bigger box. But so I had to put the relay upside down, because I want to be able to take the AT Tiny out if I want to change the program. And I actually still have the 20 degree program, so I have to change it to the 30 degree program and the reverse it. But for uh, just making sure that everything works I'm going to uh, keep this program so we have the headers here 220 in goes to the to the 5 volt converter adapter and uh, then it goes to cables in here to the AT tiny and also we have the cable that goes to the common on the relay and then normally closed we chose so if this circuit stops working, it will the pump will stay on. Uh, so let's see. Plus. So it's going to be like this. And let's hope that the 5 volts power adapter still works that I haven't messed it up so here goes nothing and for the 50 11th time hot wires 220 lethal to touch don't touch and please no smoke up oh, it turned off and then 
and it turned on and then off again. So I have a lamp here. Let's plug that in. Right, so it's shining and if we make it a bit hotter here, it turns off. So we have a contained circuit here with everything that we need and also 5 volts. So perfect, I say. Perfect. And don't touch that. Um, so let's just put this in place then. Okay, so here's my little water corner of the house. I'm not going to go through it all. I'm just going to show that here. That's the DS28B, DS18B20 sticking out there. And then the cable goes down here, up into a pipe over and then it comes down to the box on the wall my irobot reused box and uh, i switched so it only checks the temperature every 30 seconds because once every second is a bit too often and it just we just put the the pump on and off uh, when it's at the just at the threshold so it's uh, once every 30 seconds and uh, yeah so here it is connected to power and here's the pump goes up and up into the the water splitter where the pump is so this concludes this episode and uh, it's another project on my to-do list that is checked off. Uh, I, with this, I now have my uh, water heating pump uh, under control and only pumps water to the rest of the house heating system when the water is 30 degrees or warmer in the tank. Uh, except for the fact that I will actually save 60 watts per hour uh, as soon as the water is less than 20, uh, 30 degrees because it won't run uh, I will also have the benefit of not getting the house colder by pumping cold water around the house so that's those two things and the cost for this project if you buy everything on eBay as I've done you will pay around one dollar for the 80 tiny if you buy a 10 pack a dollar for the relay, a dollar for the power supply, and also if you buy a 10 pack of the DS18B20, you will get it at one dollar actually. Uh, there is at least one selling it for that. Uh, if you buy it one, on, one by one, you will pay four or five dollars. So, say between five and ten dollars for this project is still quite nice. You also need the box or the enclosure, uh, which I ha had just lying around. So, hope you like this. If you did, uh, please subscribe. And I have more projects coming. Not so much in this genre anymore, because I think I'm done here. I just need to clean up. So, until next time, take care. Bye.